I'm Dave Abrams. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this week's episode, we'll talk to one of the county's highest ranked Boy Scouts and we'll sit down with the county's legislative officer, but first making headlines this week. Well, Dave, you decide if this is a meow or a meow or well, the county has. <laughs> it's almost Halloween. <laughs> is that what you're going to be a cat? No. You I should. Don't know. You should. Okay. All right. Well, the county has started a new program aimed at controlling the stray cat population. Rude Ranch is teaming up with the Anne Arundel Community Cat Coalition and the Space Paw and Neuter Nook to attack the problem. Try saying that. That's a tough one. Try yeah, I got to hand that. it to you. The Neuter Nook. Space Paw. The Neuter Nook. Neuter Nook. Space Community spa. Cat Coalition. Space Paw. Space Paw. The program catches stray cats and performs neutering as well as vaccinations. The cat's ears will also be tipped, a painless procedure to identify which cats have been spayed or neutered so they can be easily identified later. Guess how many stray cats are turned into, a shelter, in, into shelters in a year? Guess. State of Maryland, um, I'm going to go with 10,000. 10,000. 50,000! Oh my god. 50,000! And that's just the ones that are brought to shelters, Dave. A kickoff event will be held at the Key School in Hillsmere Shores on Saturday, October 8th at 11 a.m. For more information, you can check out Animal Control or Friends of Animal Control on Facebook. And if you want to volunteer for the spay and neutering project, send an email to Suzanne Goal at M-A-C-E-S-U-Z at Verizon.net. I'm going to give that a meow. <sighs> Well, now is the time to support our military service men and women. October 1st is Military Appreciation Day, sponsored by the Anne Arundel County Police and Fire Departments. The program will run from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., and there will be lots of fun attractions, including Military Santa Claus. Santa! How about that? Military Santa Claus. Military Santa! That's right. Brewster Ice Cream. Brewster Ice Cream? Yes. I love Brewster Ice Cream. Trucking for troops. Troops! Trucking for troops? And Captain Defense from the Ravens. What? Ka -ka! You. what? Yeah. Yeah, all kinds of sound effects on today's show. The American War Mothers will be collecting items to be placed in care packages to be sent to deployed troops. So be sure to bring something to send overseas. The Toys for Tots Fill a Bus campaign will also be there. And you can join the fun at 8495 Veterans Highway and salute our troops. For more information, call 410-222-1821. What a great event. It is a great event, and they deserve it, and we need to come out there and, and show our support, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Now, Dave, as we all know, my favorite season is? Fall. And if we had another hour to tag on to our showtime, I could potentially list all the things that I love about fall, it's such as pumpkins and blanket scarves and bonfires and coffee and Starbucks specials and Halloween and uh, warm I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we have to go. Oh, oh okay. Well, Dave, so we like have, some stuff. I like, like some, some, some fall stuff. Fall. Okay. We have the perfect event for people that love fall coming up at Kinder Farm Park. It all goes down on Saturday, October 8th, big day for great events. The farm will host everything from children's games and antique tractors to hay rides, also my favorite, pumpkin painting, also favorite, and scarecrow making, tag that on the list. Wait, everything too. can't be your favorite. I love it all. Favorite means Falling the leaves, favorite. candles, using my crock pot, using the pressure cooker, finding new okay, recipes. Uh, okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. The festival starts at 10 a.m. and runs until 4 p.m. on Saturday. And after a rainy week like this one, there is a rain date for the Harvest Festival on the following day, October 9th. So come out and enjoy Kinder Farm Park in Millersville. We'll be there wearing orange. Absolutely. Orange. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll talk to the county's legislative officer, Bernie Marzik. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town. And we'll be right back. I've always wanted to go to college. 
That helps you evolve as a person. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen, and I am your dividend. Welcome back. Joining us on Week in Review this week, we're honored to have Bernie Marzik, the county's legislative officer, in the studio with us. What's going on, Bernie? How you doing today? Uh, doing very well. Appreciate very you having me on the show. Now, how long have you been working with the county? Uh, coming on two years now. Two I came years. in when the county executive was sworn in back uh, almost two years ago. It'll be in December. It'll be two years. So. Very good. And tell us about the role of, of the legislative officer. What's your work entail? Sure. Uh, my day-to-day -day job is working with the county council and the state legislature to uh, implement different public policies that uh, are going to have an effect on Anne Arundel County from everything from small issues that uh, could be a, an issue for one or two people in the county up to larger zoning issues or tax and uh, fee issues that have a, a much larger impact on folks in the county. And tell us about your work before coming to the county. Sure. Um, prior to working uh, for the county executive, I worked uh, for Ducks Unlimited, uh, which is a wetland conservation organization. Um, I did public policy work for them and then also oversaw the conservation delivery for them for about seven years. So I actually started out as a lobbyist for them on Capitol Hill and then did a lot of state level work uh, in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. And then uh, prior to that, I had uh, worked for first Congressman Ehrlich and then Governor Ehrlich, uh, both on Capitol Hill and then in the State House. So uh, a lot of political and public policy work um, over the last 15 or so years. And it's a small world, a little bit of background, little tip that I'm not even sure if you know. Whoa, what's this? Little tidbit. This? Bit. Uh, I have a Capitol Hill background as well. Is that right? I worked at a lobbyist firm for about four, four or five years when I first what? got out of college, yes. Was Congressman Ehrlich there? Congressman Ehrlich was not there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, and there's a time, I mean, Bernie and I go back now. I mean, it's yeah. been some years now. Yep. But, you know, that's all. that all sounds really great, Bernie. But what is your greatest achievement, you think? Obviously, being on Weekend Review. Correct. <laughs> Correct. See, he's been coached for the show. A guest he's after a our job. own heart. You're doing a great day. job so yes. far. Yes, yes. I'm a big Very fan good. Big fan of Weekend Review. Yes, we love to hear right. that. Seriously, though, uh, your job is difficult, and I watch council meetings, and you, if, you have to be quick on your feet. You have to answer questions that you had no idea that were coming. It's, it's a tough job. What would you say are, you know, what would you say is one of the accomplishments that you're most proud of in working with the county council? Uh, I think over the last couple of years, it's, it's got to be the work that we've done to provide the largest tax and fee cuts in county history, um, both on the capital facility connection charges and then also with an income tax cut. Um, and then uh, going along with that, we've had a lot of great successes through the budget over the last couple of years to have record increases in education spending and uh, record increases in road improvements and uh, items along those lines. Also, huge investments uh, just this past year as well in stormwater, um, so trying to clean up our creeks and rivers. Um, but working with the council, it's a, a very intimate atmosphere where you're able to really connect with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and the issues that you deal with are, um, you know, I say from A to Z, but from animal control to medical marijuana. So you get some very big picture issues um, that are national issues and then down to very local uh, nitty gritty issues. So you never know what you're going to be dealing with from uh, week to week uh, on the issues in the council. And if you don't mind me saying so, I think in my observation over the last you know, 15, 20 years that I've been around the county, I think that the relationship between the county executive and the council is very good. And, and you know, you're, you're getting bills passed, the, the, you're working together, and I think that's a testament to you. I mean, that means that, you know, you're doing your job and you're communicating with, with all seven members of the county council and making sure they're on the same page with um, what we're trying to do. I appreciate that. And, you know, it's, uh, we put a lot of work into it, and it's, um, you know, I've been fortunate. I said it, I've worked at you know, the highest levels of the federal government on, on Capitol Hill. I've worked at the highest levels of state government working for the governor, and now the highest levels of county government. So I've, I feel like I've had pretty good experiences in working with uh, really great people in the past. And one of the first things we've done, we did when we came in with the county executives was immediately set up opening line communication with the council. Um, I talk to them on a daily basis. Uh, I just spoke with two different councilmen on, uh, earlier this afternoon, and um, you know, we're constantly talking to them about issues that are of importance to them, but then also uh, trying to work with them to get through 
uh, you know, the policies that are important to the county executive as well. So it's a, it's a constant communication that uh, I feel like we have done a very good job and I think you've seen a lot of those uh, fruits of our success with that. So. Absolutely, and I, I think I know why. I think I know why this all works. <laughs> You come from a big family, and you have a big family. Matter of fact, now that I'm running it through in my mind, do you have as many brothers and sisters as there are county councilmen? I do, actually, <laughs> coincidentally. There you that's, go. That's pretty funny. Uh, I am. I'm the baby of eight. So oh, wow. Kathy Stosh, Mary Jo, Pete, Fred, and Bernie. You're the little so one. Oh. I am, well, I'm not the little one, but I'm the baby. So. <laughs> are others uh, in government as well? Or? Uh, I have uh, one brother is a judge um, up in New Jersey, and... Um, but I'm the only one uh, directly involved in politics, per se. My brother ran for office at one point, and he kind of uh, got me excited about it when I was young, and that was my initial start, and um, we were involved just locally in New Jersey. Um, he had a similar career path to me, actually. He worked for a uh, state senator and assemblyman in New Jersey, um, and then uh, when I came right out of, Capitol, or out of college, I worked on Capitol Hill right away as my first job, so I really fell in love with politics then. But um, you know, we're a very close-knit family and, um, you know, we uh, talk constantly as well. And I never really thought about it, though, that it is seven, <laughs> many seven people to and deal with. And four of your own now, correct? I do, Aww. yes. Yeah, we have uh, my wife, Keely, and I have uh, my daughter, Leah, is now in second grade. And then we have twins, Tommy and Claire, that are in kindergarten. Twins! Yes, oh. and then our daughter, Stella, is uh, almost a year. She's uh, 10 months old now. So. Congratulations. See, Chris, oh. I think this is where we learn conflict resolution. When you have <laughs> right, right, right. six brothers and sisters, yes. and you have you know a finite number of bathrooms, <laughs> you got to figure out how to work things out. <laughs> That's true. Right? That's one, right. Makes you great at politics. <laughs> one, one and a half for 10 people in a house is a lot. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Plus now four kids. So. Yes. Yeah, it keeps us very busy but you know it's funny that I've described working with the county council as you're working with seven very different personalities and very different uh, ideologies but if you look you know across the board you've got uh, you know a, a river keeper you have a, a, a salesman you have a, a restaurant business owner you have Military. a landlord you have a marine who's a computer scientist you've got a board of education uh, employee so you have very different interests and uh, Councilman Peruca being a, an attorney uh, as well. So you have a, a wide variety of experience and, and knowledge up there on the council. And um, so you, you have to learn how to communicate with seven different, very different people. Now you're about to be spending a lot of time with Maryland General, General Assembly. Tell us yes. a bit about what's going on. Sure. Um, that's really the other half of the, the work that we do. Obviously the session is from uh, January to April every year in Maryland. We have a 90 day legislative session. and. Um, there are a lot of state public pol or st state policies that uh, have a big impact on the county. So I work very closely with our 15-member House delegation and five-member Senate delegation um, to put through policies that the county executive is trying to implement. But then we also work with them on bills that they're looking to put through um, that could have an impact on uh, our residents as well. And then we also work very closely with the Maryland Association of Counties on issues that are statewide issues that have a, a big impact on the county. So every year we're very busy for those uh, 90 days um, while the session is in. And uh, again, we have a great relationship with the, the delegation. A lot of that is due to the fact, you know, the county executive being a former delegate uh, worked hand in hand with these guys for a long time. So um, it's also a, those 90 days are very busy for us as we try to work on those bills. Busy, but I'm always wondering, is it kind of like, I don't want to liken it to a back to school experience, but are those familiar faces that you get excited to see, some old friends? It is, it is. It's an exciting time of year when everyone comes back in January and um, it's, it's almost like going back to school or yeah. going back to the college. Um, you get to uh, see and work with people. It's a very collegial atmosphere. Uh, people are very friendly, and it's a, a nice social atmosphere. A great time, a great town to be in as well in Annapolis. Oh, There's yeah. always so much going on, you know, after hours as well, where you really develop those relationships. But uh, it's an exciting time, and then it, it kind of has its peak where you get to uh, a point where the workload and uh, people get a little bit tired toward the middle of the session, and uh, then things kind of wind down at the end where people are happy to be done with that 90 days. Oh, I bet. Do you have some favorite hot spots when you're down there in session? Um, you know, I. 
He doesn't I'm, talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have too many hot spots anymore because four young kids at home. Right, uh, right. I'm but I mean, where much, you go but, for lunch or? Uh, we go to Ram's Head a lot because, you know, right across yes. the street. Uh, yes, Stan and Joe's, well. obviously a great place. My, my favorite place in town is McGarvey's, has always been, with, Garvey's, which yeah. uh, we don't get down to as much. When we were in a state house, we used to always go to Galway Bay all the time, yep. obviously, yep. Uh, real close there. But all the places in town are great spots and um, always something going on. Uh, during session, it's funny because you, you walk down and you know you see people left left side of the road, right side of the road that are walking up, and you know so many faces down there. So it's it's really a neat scene. If you're into politics and you um, like a lot of these, uh, all the players that are out there, it's a, it's a fun time of year to kind of be reunited with them, and then they go their own way, and then they come back again next year. So. Very good. Yep. Well, thank you for all the hard work that you're doing for the county. We oh, appreciate it. And it's my pleasure. Good luck with your upcoming session. Thank you. And we'll be right back appreciate with more that. Week in Review right after this. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation. You're resigning. Why? You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. Oh, I forgot. I'll do better. Please don't quit on me. Don't let your heart quit on you. Get your uncontrolled high blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Welcome back. Boy Scouts do so many great things in our community, and our own Pat Daly met one of our most decorated Scouts in the county. Pat? Thanks, guys. There's so many people who, who give public service and, you know, do community service throughout the, throughout the communities all over the county that, you know, really are unsung heroes that don't expect recognition, you know, and nobody knows that more than our local Boy Scouts, our local Eagle Scouts. Well, today, I'm here with David Bestine. He's one of the most decorated scouters in the country, and we're here to talk to him today about his experiences and to talk to him about a honor that was bestowed on him nearly 50 years after um, the Hero Act, Heroistic Act took place. Dave, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you have a busy schedule with your scouting activities. Do do me a little, you know, just be a little general. Let us know, you know, the experiences. What, what did you get out of being an Eagle Scout and a Boy Scout? Well, I can look back down 1944 when I joined the Scouts. And then uh, I had also done a lot of sports along with that. A very active young man in my lifetime. And I can remember going for my Eagle Scout. And that took me four years, 1948. And I went to the Knights of Columbus pool. We, we did our swimming and our life-saving tests there. And then we sat around tables, and I had already received the Protea Patra Award. That was award highest award in the Lutheran Church that you could get. And um, I sat around those tables, and they asked different questions about uh, what we were doing with our life. And, uh, and then later on, I can remember in my lifetime that later on they did – the Eagle Scout uh, Board of Review was um, not asking personal questions about what kind of things that we did, more about what we liked about it, what we disliked about it, and things like that. They did not test you anymore. And, th and today, uh, they also have Eagle Scout projects. We did not have Eagle Scout projects back there. And I remember just being an intermedi intermediate swimmer. And in those days, I went from Brooklyn Homes and took a streetcar, went over to City College and took my swimming tests over there, swimming and life-saving tests over there. And I think today there's no way I could ever do that today. But years ago you could do that. You could be out late at night, get on a bus, and feel safe. Well, I remember on September the 4th, 1946, there was a group of boys, and we called ourselves the Navy Commandos because it was near the war there. And uh, we, we used to go down to the cove, and that was down at the um, Harbor Tunnel. And at the Harbor Tunnel, there was no Harbor Tunnel then, really, but it was called a cove. So we went down there. We used to go swimming down there all the time. And one of our boys, one of my buddies, Billy, started drowning. He hit a soft side where they had sand and gravel. He went into the water. And uh, the boys were hollering for me to go to save him. I went over and grabbed him by his arm, swam across the, the cove spit up a lot of water and he did and I saved his life. Now my father was scoutmaster so all this information was put in but he he never he never really went after the honor medal or anything for me so after 40 some years he passed away and we found an envelope over at the house and that's right next door here 
and uh, he got the uh, we got the envelope out, and uh, the girls were kidding me about putting in for something. I said it's too late; it's too many years. So they've submitted all the letters and stuff from the district advancement chairman in the Four Rivers district, and then we submitted it to the Baltimore Area Council, and they submitted it to National, and they awarded me the honor medal. And when I look at the letter that was written, it said about the committee knew that the scoutmaster, my father wouldn't put in that for me, but he remembered, they remembered also where a veteran had received a special honor after 50 some years, and they thought it only be right that I should receive something. And I remember Ed Turek, he was our district commissioner. I used to help him back then with awarding different medals and stuff for training sessions. And uh, that night I said, well, what are we awarding tonight? And uh, he, he, he just stuck in there and I, all of a sudden he awarded me the honor medal, which was quite, quite a thing. I get a little emotional about it. Well, you're, it's definitely clear that you're a symbol of dedication uh, to such a great organization. Um, I I was a Boy Scout. I went to Weeblo. I wanted to be an Eagle Scout. It just wasn't in the cards. But uh, one last thing I wanted to talk to you about. You have a special thing that you go. You have a special poem that you go by, and I'd wondered if you'd read it for us um, because it's it's yet another example of how you know an Eagle Scout you know, is such an all-around kind of person. So go ahead and read that for us. I shall pass through this world but once. If therefore is any kindness I can do or anything that I can do, let me do it now. Let me not defer or neglect it, for I shall not pass through this world again. That's Thank you, Dave. Yeah. And one thing, you know, I had gotten, uh, I had gotten uh, uh, the... Um, I have quite a few little plaques that I got over the years, and some of them that are proud of. I was the, um, uh, I'm also the associate dean of the doctoral program from the University of Scouting. I've done that for close to 30 years. I have a beautiful plaque that I got for that, and also with the um, Anne Arundel Neighborhood Association. I was president of that for two and a half years, and I did the clean sweep program down here by the school. I did that for close to eight years. In fact, this year I'm starting to get out of it because i got to get somebody else to do that. But uh, those are some of the things. I've always tried to help out in the community the best I can because by keeping the community clean, I think it really helps us out and makes it a better society for our youngsters to live in. But if I had to, uh, to do with again, I would do it all again. Well, you, you can't get any better than that. We're standing here with a Patriot. I appreciate you taking the time with us, with us, Dave. All right, back to you guys. Thanks, Pat. Were you a Boy Scout, Dave? I was not. Scout's honor, Kristen. <laughs> Were you a Girl Scout? I was not. <laughs> I love to eat Girl Scout cookies. And I have several friends who are Boy Scouts, so there you go. So. There you go. Yeah. So tell us about your big weekend. Oh. Kristen Lagana at Meriwether Post Pavilion, people. It was amazing. It had a great time. I had a, a really great time. Um, for folks out there that don't know, every year my band plays the Ellicott City Main Street Music Fest. And, of course, this year it, it could not be held downtown as they're still trying to repair a lot of what was damaged by the flood. Mm. So they um, found a very gracious host, Meriwether Post Pavilion. Oh, that was nice of the Post family. I know, to not only host the event, but the Meriwether group also decided that, um, since this year they decided to sell tickets, usually the event is free, mm -hmm. they decided to sell tickets to try and make some money for the Ellicott City Partnership. Meriwether let them keep 100% of the proceeds. Wow. So it was really incredible. So very big shout outs to Mary and Any idea roughly what they raised? Nothing lot, yet. I, I haven't heard any numbers yet. I keep my eye open on Facebook. I'm sure they're still trying to recoup from the, from the weekend because it was really crazy. But um, as speaking as one of the artists, I had many friends that played that got the opportunity to play at Meriwether. Uh, it was a surreal experience, and we're very, very Woodstock. lucky. It was our Woodstock. It was your very own Woodstock. It was very, it, it was. And you know, if anybody wanted to go on Facebook and they wanted to say, put in the search bar victims of experience, they could actually see some of what happened at the show, maybe? We have some pictures up and some video. Okay. Some, we had some wonderful family and friends that were out. You guys ripped it. Documenting you guys were event. great. Thank you so much. I was not there, but I did see Thank it. You. you guys were great. I, indeed, good job, by the way. Yes. I, I was at the Fringe Fest. You were at the Fringe Fest. Tell me about the Fringe Fest. It was very nice. It yeah. was very nice. Um, first of all, you know, people from around here in Annapolis will, will, will appreciate this. 
you know, I'm driving downtown, and I'm like, how's this gonna go? You know, is it gonna be the whole town is mobbed and there's nowhere to park and that sort of thing? Or do I, which plans do I have to make? You have to do your parking thing. Yeah, you gotta be prepared. It's a thing. Yeah. So I drive right down the city dock, it's starting to get really traffic-y. Find a parking spot, walk up to Middleton's, and have oysters in that corner seat right there where you're, you're looking at me. the city dock. The coveted corner Just seat. Just walked right in there. Walked right in. It was amazing. And that was the beginning of a, of a wonderful evening. Um, shout out to some of my buddies over there. You know, we had Eric Evans, who was on our show before. Yeah. Ali Harbaugh and Ruben Dobbs and um, all the crew down there. Dominic Fragman, who we had on Dominic. the show before. Was, was he performing or did you just Of course, into him? he was playing Where was with, he at? you know, multiple instruments and one guy. Was he on, doing street stuff or he was, was he? He was playing in the street, yes. And um, uh, there was tons of art, there was burlesque shows, there was the Bacon Brothers, which I missed, Yeah. but they were there. Um, apparently he was walking around incognito. Oh wow. I didn't get to talk to him. Oh. I would have asked him a lot of questions about Then you could have been one of my six degrees of, seven degrees of I know, Bacon. I know, that's what I wanted. Yeah. That would have really made the evening. Yeah. yeah I didn't you... quite get there, but I really wanted to ask him a lot of questions about Footloose. Yeah. Such as, you know, ask, why ask would now. you wear those sweatpants? And dance around in them at a barn. Because they provide the ultimate flexibility. Oh, is that what it yeah. is? Yeah. It's yeah. Hit me with another question I'm answering for Kevin. Oh, um, let's see. Why did your legislature pass an un constitutional law banning music in the town? As far as I know, the Constitution does not allow that. Because we wanted to make a movie, and thank goodness that would never happen in Annapolis. No, what? we wouldn't do that in Annapolis. We value it art in Annapolis. It would not sit well with the folks of Annapolis. I mean, good for them. We give them kudos all the time, but they did a very good job. The turnout was good. Uh, the businesses were full. Everybody was having a good time. So I think it was. And like, where'd you park? I parked. Uh, I parked on Maryland Avenue at a meter. Ah. Yeah. DTA Which is, is like killing perfectly it right now. halfway between Middleton's and the Fringe Fest. It yeah. Was, it was perfect. I mean, the, the Wednesday night outdoor series, the different festivals, we still have them coming, the Chocolate Lovers Festival. We gotta, we gotta do something on that. We'll, we'll fill you in uh, after Could we chocolate. maybe go on like location? Chocolate. Can we try some chocolate? Can we do that? Will you let us hang out? I think there's Airstreams involved. Can we Welcome. try chocolate? Can we have some chocolate? Could you maybe get us chocolate? We like cold chocolate, we like hot chocolate, we like melted chocolate. Lukewarm we like chocolate, chocolate it's fine. We like chocolate sundaes. We're not picky. We like chocolate ice cream. Uh, yeah. We like chocolate candy bars. Yeah. I could go on all night. Chocolate Kinda strawberries like is my favorite. Yeah. This is, this fall. is the brainstorming We didn't finish edition. up talking about my favorite things about fall. I don't think fall. you mentioned boots. You forgot boots. I forgot boots, tall socks, flannel shirts, uh, jackets, love jackets. Uh, I had my eye on a cute vest the other day. Um, and by the way, I don't share all this f with you. I really don't. I, I love summer. I love summer. I'm upset summer's gone. I'm sad. And I don't want it to be cold. I'm freaking out already that you know it's gonna be freezing in my house. I turned my heat on for the first time in my no. car today. In my car. I was gonna say in your house, really. It's been a rainy, nasty week, and I, I had the heat the on. I had the defroster on. Oh, there you go. Because of all the uh, rain. Go. How about all this rain? How about all this rain? What, about, what is the deal with I'll all this rain? I'll tell you what it is. What it's is fall. It? Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna get Kristen's snow predictions coming soon in a couple weeks. So <laughs> got my almanac. I know she, she nailed it last year. So if you want to know what's gonna happen, you just ask Kristen Logano. Just ask the almanac. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook or YouTube. Just go in that little search bar and type Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county and. We will see you next time. Fall! Oh, look, it's falling. Fall. Oh.